Hey everyone, it's Joe the CRM Chap here and welcome to a new video on the channel today and a little bit unusual because we're going to be taking a look at a specific user request involving um, two interesting components within Microsoft Dataverse, uh, choice or choices and lookup tables. Uh, so the genesis from this is a comment from um, Paul Kroon. Um, so first of all, thanks very much for submitting the question today, Paul. Uh, and we'll just read it out very quickly. Hi, Joe. Thanks for your great videos. I would like to ask you one question. Would you be willing to create a separate video on when you would use a lookup table over an option set? The reason is that when I think of option sets, same as choice columns in SharePoint, they lack the flexibility to be able to change the options later and be able to, for example, easily hide certain options you don't use anymore in all of your UIs, portals, model-driven apps, Canvas apps, and external applications. My colleagues use option sets all the time uh, and everywhere, and I'm the whole time thinking, what if the requirements change? Knowing change is certain always. So if you're willing to create a video with your view on what is best practice regarding option sets versus lookup tables, I'll be very thankful. So yeah, so um, option sets. Um, so first of all, for those who are wondering, okay, what, what is an option set? Maybe you're very, you're very recent into the platform. So option sets are what used to be um, used to be the name for choice or choices back in the day. There was a, a renaming about sort of six months ago, um, basically to sort of align the platform more so that so that people and sort of traditional Excel users will feel more comfortable sort of working with it. So entities became tables. Um, records became rows, various changes like that. So when we're talking about option sets, we are referring to uh, choice or choices. And you've got two kinds of option sets in the in the system as it stands today. You've got your uh, single single um, single choice choice, if that makes sense, um, where you can select a single item from a list, uh, or you've got a multi-select choices field which lets you select multiple items from a list of items that you define and the key thing here is that when you're you are defining yourself in terms of um, the list of items that a user can potentially select so you've got quite a bit of control as a consequence around that uh, as an alternative to that if you're working with sort of list based data then um, a potential altern alternate approach is to go down the lookup table route um, now it's a bit more involved in terms of the setup steps with that, you need to actually go off and create a separate table, create a relationship, uh, but from there you can effectively replicate the same kind of behaviour um, as you would with you know, a standard choice or choices, uh, well probably just a standard choice column in terms of the, the key features you've got on there, uh, but with a, as we'll discuss, um, a bit more control over what's actually in there and what you can do with it, uh, which may or may not be useful based on your scenario. So I guess to get to the sort of the, the question itself, I'm going to jump to a demonstration shortly, maybe just to explain these concepts a little bit better. Um, I guess really, and you're trying to decide in terms of what's best to use, um, and ultimately, yes, I guess uh, Paul alludes to you know managing changes and obviously making sure you're not setting yourself up for problems in the future. I guess really you need to sort of ask yourself, I, I would say maybe five key questions in terms of when you're starting out, okay, do I want to use a, a choice or an option set or do I want to use a lookup table instead? The first question you need to ask yourself, okay, well, how often do you think your list of items needs to change? Is it a very sort of static set of items? Do you anticipate needing to sort of maybe go in once in a blue moon to sort of update and change that? Or is it the case that things are going to be changing fairly sort of frequently? Um, you know, so maybe, you know, maybe a couple of times a week, uh, multiple times per day, people need to go in and add new list items and things like that. Um, so really, um, the answer to that question will probably steer you more towards um, using choice if you think the list of items are going to be fairly static over a course of, course of time. Um, or on the flip side of that, if it's going to be changing quite frequently, then the lookup table option may be a better candidate for you. Okay. Second question you probably need to ask yourself, okay, do you need to give or is there going to be scope to potentially give um, the end users of the system of the Dataverse or the apps that sit on top of it, do you need to give them the ability to modify that list at all in future? And and when I say give the ability to modify, I mean in not in a customization sense, I mean in the sense of actually going into the application, um, into a model-driven app, onto a form and changing the value of that as if you would any other record in the system. Um, because of course as customizers we can go in and change an option a choice um, list at any particular point um, but the um, there is some additional work involved as part of that as we'll see in the demonstration quite shortly so again if you think there's going to be a need for users to be able to have that ability to do that easily without that specialist system knowledge being required then maybe a lookup table is going to be more your um, more your sort of preferred option in that in that case 
Another consideration is, okay, do you intend to leverage the sort of the list data that you're using as part of a potential reporting application in the future? Um, because of how um, choices are structured in the system, they're stored actually the base values as um, integer values which from a database and from a um, query retrieval point of view has some performance advantages when you're working with you know, grouping data and things like that. Um, so if you anticipate having to do um, sort of you know, Power BI reporting, maybe you want to sort of group by a certain category, um, uh, you know, a, 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 an integer value in that case from an option set and be able to sort of present that data out, then potentially an option set or, cho or choice, I should keep saying, uh, a choice or a choice is going to be a better option for you because you're going to have potential performance benefits from that. Uh, if you go down the lookup table route, okay, you can potentially do that, um, but you're having to end up probably working with the, the GUIDs of the, uh, the lookup table records instead in order to be basically perform that grouping or instead working on labels. And from a performance standpoint, you're not going to see the same capabilities, unfortunately. So reporting, um, give some thought perhaps in terms of upfront, okay, where, where do you think this data is going to be interrogated by the business? And it might be that maybe, okay, you're going to lose something may maybe by going down the choice or choices route, but potentially from a reporting standpoint, it, you're going to be, it's going to be paying dividends as an option potentially. Another question to ask yourself, okay, do you anticipate any additional metadata needing to be stored alongside your list data? And by, by that, what I mean is maybe sort of additional columns or data. So maybe if you're working with, let's say, uh, you know, category data, for example, you want to categorize based on a list of items, you know, do you foresee having the ability of being able to, or needing to have, let's say, descriptions attached to that? Maybe you need subcategory values, maybe you need other properties, you know, that need to be sort of attached to that over time. When you're going down the lookup table route option, um, potentially you're going to, um, um, you're going to, you know, be able to um, quite easily do that just by adding on new columns to your table. You know, it's going to be very straightforward for you to go in as customized to do that. Um, when you're going down the choice route, okay, we, you, 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 all you get with that, and we'll see in a second, is just a list, uh, you know, a list of sort of integer values. You can't customize further beyond that to tag on additional properties or metadata. The best you would be able to do in that scenario is maybe just set up a, a, an additional, um, you know, choice attribute uh, but over time potentially as you're doing that more and more your table starts to become quite messy and less normalized so that might not be ideal based on your particular need um, so yeah so, so give some thought in terms of okay where do you see it going ultimately you know and if there is that need for that additional metadata and you know that up front then perhaps maybe do consider um, consider going down the lookup table route in that option and the final question is um, and qualified to a certain degree it's around okay well how easily do you want people to tag on multiple selections as part of the list that you're working with? Um, and the keyword there is easily, because if you're going down the lookup table route, um, then there's potentially ways and means for you to be able to sort of have that capability. Um, I think a potential option for you to be able to do that would be that you'd have to set up a either a sort of a manual or a native many-to-many -many relationship between your two tables. And then from there, I believe there's um, controls available via sort of the PCF gallery. Uh, I'll put a link in the chat for that in, in the um, in the video for that. Um, um, you know, to be able to sort of just add on a control straightforwardly onto the form where people can quite easily just select multiple items from a list potentially. Uh, out of the box with the system, you can sort of do sort of the same by working with subgrids, but it's not a really great user experience. So the, the benefit of um, multi-select choices or ch multi-select choices um, is that you've got that ability very easily being able to allow people to sort of select multiple um, items from your list whereas there's a bit more work involved um, if you're going down the sort of second route so so yeah so those are the sort of things that maybe you need to sort of think about um, when you're sort of starting out um, I think the best way to sort of maybe just sort of explain these nuances in a bit more detail is maybe just let's just dive in now uh, and let's see an example in terms of how uh, both standard choice attributes and lookup attributes sort of work in practice in the system. Okay, so we jumped into the Maker portal and what we've got here is just a very sort of simple solution where what we've built out are effectively two tables, uh, a choice list that we're going to work with. As you can see, I'm still I'm still wedded to the older names, 
um, as you can sort of see both in the naming of this it's kind of a hard habit to break out of but never mind um, so yeah so we've got a, um, a sort of a global choice list on here just with a couple of options as you can see and then we just created just a very simple sort of model driven app that sort of um, um, sort of we can use to demonstrate further so we've got our primary table which is used to store both our global um, choice list uh, and also our lookup as well so as you can see with the standard sort of um, choice experience if we're working with single um, choice option sets we've got a drop down list that we can very easily sort of select from so it gives us um, you know a very sort of consolidated and total view in terms of the options and that we can potentially work with um, for this attribute uh, which may be beneficial based on our particular needs um, whereas we're, with the lookup field again we can sort of see that um, Instead, what we get is sort of a search box instead, and we can see we've got some of the recent options on there, but the onus is on um, me as the user to sort of just search a little bit further on there, and then we can see when we go into it that we've got all of the potential uh, choices that we want to work with are sort of listed down there, and I can then just select the one that I want. Um, I am restricted because of how this relationship has been set up, and we can look at that in a second. I am limited just to selecting one option on there but potentially um, for a quite a large uh, list of items if we're working with then it's going to take me some time potentially just to search through uh, and find that but the uh, potential benefit from the from me as a user standpoint is that okay maybe I want to add on choice four at this point I can very sort of quickly sort of do this just by clicking new record on there typing in choice four save and close and we can see the straight away um, it's in there and it's available for me to select. Um, this is all of course provided that I've given the appropriate permissions to be able to do that in the application. Um, it could be that maybe for certain specific users maybe I just okay I can give them the ability to um, sort of select a lookup field option um, via a pen and the pen 2 privileges but I'm not going to let them create them instead. So you can maybe have the, the best of both worlds depending on different user types for that but in this scenario um, because I'm system administrator I've got the full access around that to be able to do that. Um, whereas you know if, if I was um, a um, working with just my choice up there and I just wanted to um, add a new option on then potentially I'm going to I'm going to have to always go into the maker portal to do that. I'm going to have to go into my um, choice list down there, and we can see that I can add on the new option like so. Um, and again, it's a fairly sort of similar, similarish experience. Um, note as as I mentioned earlier that with um, the uh, choice route, um, the underlying values for that are stored as integers. At any point we can go in and override the name and the label values, uh, but ultimately once we've sort of saved that and we can click on a previous one just to confirm, that value is basically locked now in the system, despite the fact that maybe I can go in and maybe just override that, change that to choice three, um, save that and then come out of it again. But the key thing here is that I'm having to go in, into the maker portal and have, I need to have those system customizer privileges and most importantly, this isn't something that I can maybe straightforwardly just go into my production system and just do during the day. You know, typically I'm going to have to follow some sort of formal change request type process. I'm going to have to um, go through that whole deployment cycle to be able to sort of um, do all of that. Um, so, you know, you've got a bit more control in that particular, in that particular um, scenario. Um, but you're not going to be able to be as flexible ultimately. So to summarise then in terms of, okay, you know, it, it really does, you know, it's the typical sort of, um, um, you know, uh, sort of on the fence response really. It, it, it does sort of depend on your particular scenario. Um, I think certainly the, the choice of the choices route does present some advantages. Um, on particularly in certain scenarios. I think a potentially good one as well is that, you know, although, you know, when we're building these solutions, we do like to empower uh, the people using them to actually do more with them. We don't want to have that core reliance on, you know, a specialized IT person to be able to do, you know, as we saw, a very straightforward thing. You know, we, we want to try and just sort of rail against that as much as possible. But, you know, at the same token, you know, in my experience working with these systems a lot, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, trust can be sort of easily given um, and sometimes, you know, misplaced to a certain extent. You know, so if, you know, you could end up, you know, for example, if we assume, let's say, a scenario where, okay, you've gone down the list route option 
um, people are happily creating their own um, items, they're modifying existing ones. Uh, you know, what happens if somebody, you know, puts in a typo in there? That then goes through to the board, an executive sees that, they then get pretty annoyed because they're they've got on the nice clean beautiful reports they can see typos on there what happens if somebody was to put something even worse on there you know maybe do an expletive um, or, or something even worse than that and then that ends up going out into sort of a customer communication you know so it really does you know in that scenario okay well maybe we don't want to give that sort of level of control maybe we want to have a process where we can sort of validate what people are creating first of all or requesting first of all um, you know, we can suggest improvements. We can maybe just stop any potential rubbish from going in um, by having that sort of gatekeeper there. So, in the case of the typo, maybe we can, you know, get that fixed before it, it's then applied in the system, uh, and ultimately, you know, have that control. Um, you know, which may or may not be important based on your scenarios. I guess the key thing is that you, you, it needs to be it needs to be a business, you know, a solid business reason for doing that, not just because um, you know a couple of people in IT are basically just getting a bit annoyed that. Um, you know, other people in the organisation are basically doing their job for them. You know, we need to just, you know, have it rooted in, in good mentality from a business standpoint. You know, and indeed, you know, in certain situations, you know, provided that the list data is not crucial, provided you're not going to be exposed out to potential some of the risks that we're talking about, then certainly the the lookup table option is going to be far better. And I can say I can give those, you know, um, quite sort of granular permissions out so that people can actually do do. You know, populate and work with that in the application, not have to go through that busy sort of change request period and ultimately build out, um, you know, get, have a solution that's working for them instead of the other way around, you know, which is a really nice place that we want to end up being in. So I hope this video has been really useful. So thanks again, Paul, for the question. I think it's a really good um, um, sort of um, debate to have and has, you know, there's obviously advantages and disadvantages down both routes. Um, I'd be really interested to hear what your thoughts are in the comments below. Um, if you agree with me or indeed disagree with me, really great to have these sort of debates and stuff like that. So if you have got questions about this, um, you know, put it in the chat below or just let me know if you've got any other questions. You know, I'd be happy to do another video where we can discuss them a bit further. But for now, I uh, hope you have a great day and take care. Cheers.